1993, law enforcement seized less than 200 pills in all the United States. Last year, we seized 12 million. Six year difference, how quickly it's come upon us. From 200 pills to how many million? 12, over 12 million last year. And that staggering increase has created even more dangerous and deadly problems with ecstasy. So many people are doing ecstasy, so much money being made in the trafficking of it, that there's now a huge market in copycat drugs. Drugs like paramethoxyamphetamine, PMA, known on the streets as death. Enter Wait. Dance Safe. I think it makes more sense for the ecstasy to be over here. A controversial new group whose mission is to identify copycats like PMA and warn users. But the way Dance Safe like accomplishes that goal here. has some parents and authorities up in arms. While Dance Safe is adamant about the dangers of ecstasy copycats, it refuses to condemn the use of ecstasy itself. In fact, it goes even further. See these cards? Behind each card is just factual information. It sets up tables at rave parties frequented by teenagers, tests their ecstasy pills, and then hands the drugs right back to the kids. Brooke Aoyang is the director of Dance Safe's chapter in the Bay Area. I know that if we weren't here, a lot of people would either be taking bad things or, you know, um, I know that what we're doing helps. We want to keep people alive and as healthy as possible until they're ready to make their own choice to stop using. Emmanuel Sefirios is a former ecstasy user and the founder of Dance Safe. We are healthcare workers. We see ourselves as a public health organization uh, reducing drug-related harm by providing life-saving information uh, to users. The people at DanceSafe say if only Sarah and Steve had had their drugs tested, they might be alive today. So it turns black, right? It should. And that's why the organization says it's out here to save lives. A lot of times when we're here, people selling bunk pills won't sell. Huh? They'll leave. And sometimes dealers get mad at us, but that's, I don't care. You know, we're not here for the dealers. We're here for Protecting our lives. my peers. Of course, the possession of ecstasy, a dangerous and illegal substance, is a crime. Yet Dan Safe does this right out in the open. Here's how the test works. The ecstasy user hands over his or her pill for a quick analysis. Did you get it here? Did you buy it here? Okay, I have to give it back to you. No, I gotta scrape it first. Oh, sorry. Watch closely. If the pill changes color immediately to dark purple or black, then it's tested positive for the presence of ecstasy. So it detected some real ecstasy. It detected some real ecstasy, but that doesn't mean it's pure, safe. But no matter what these testers find, remember the pill is always handed back to the user. No one is ever told to take or not to take the drug. The partier disappears into the night, perhaps not realizing that even pure ecstasy can kill. Is Dance Safe really doing what it claims, providing an important public service? Or is it putting young people at risk? I think safe maybe is the wrong word in their name. Maybe it should be dance uh, deadly, dance dangerous. There are also potentially fatal physical side effects. Using pure ecstasy causes the body to dehydrate. And that's why you see so many people at these raves constantly drinking water. While on ecstasy, the body's temperature can rise dramatically to dangerous levels. And that can be a problem out here on a hot dance floor. Take too many pills and your body's organs begin to shut down, leading to a coma. Around the world, dozens of people have died after overdosing on ecstasy. What we can do is um, like make a little puncture and like kind of squeeze them out. But that hasn't stopped Dan Safe okay. from its self-appointed task of testing ecstasy at raves. Even though we did this, we just want you to know that it's not pure. It doesn't mean that it's safe and it doesn't tell you how much is in it. The DEA says the problem is Dance Safe has no expertise to test any drug. It's good though, huh? We can't say that well, it's can't, good. Can't. Its volunteers usually get only one day of training for their on-site testing. And their inexperience shows. We watched as they tested pill after pill after pill without ever changing or cleaning the razor, apparently unconcerned about possible cross-contamination. 
Not only that, we discovered that some of the testers are ravers and ecstasy users themselves. Dance Safe does point out that when testing pills, all of its volunteers must be sober and drug free. But the fact is, none of these testers are licensed laboratory technicians. The field test they do is so inconclusive. Doesn't tell you what else is in there. Doesn't tell you if it's strong ecstasy, weak ecstasy. Doesn't really even tell you if it's ecstasy. Not so, says Dancey's founder. Ecstasy releases serotonin. He insists that the program is effective and that any drug testing is better than doing nothing. After all, he says, these partiers are going to take the drug anyway. The drug war uh, has been a miserable failure. We have not stopped the spread of drugs. Just say no. People who lived through the Nancy no. Reagan just say no years. Just say no. You'd be have seen that. We need to try something different. But what troubles authorities most about Dansafe is its practice of scraping the pill and then giving it back to the partier with no warning whatsoever against the use of illegal drugs. It sounds like and it looks like you're endorsing drug use. Well, you know, that criticism has only come from the media and a few uneducated law enforcement officials who we haven't spoken to yet. The testing at the raves, he says, is simply an effort to save lives. In fact, Dance Safe compares its work to needle exchange programs that try to prevent the spread of disease among IV drug users. We see that as a good parallel. Um, needle exchange programs were uh, one of the first harm reduction services to become uh, popular and pill testing, like needle exchange, is, is a service. But where does Dance Save get the money to conduct this operation? Well, you may be surprised to hear that much of its funding comes from some big names in, of all places, the Silicon Valley. Ecstasy supporters like Bob Wallace and Steve Simages, who have given tens of thousands of dollars to Dance Save. What do you say to those folks who look at Dance Safe and say, these folks, the people you're funding, mm -hmm. sanction drug use? Well, they don't sanction drug use. They don't encourage people to go take drugs. What they do is they say, well, if you're already going to take drugs, here's what it's going to do to you, and let's make sure you're taking the chemical that you wanted to take. Simages is a millionaire, just 25 years old, and the founder of his own internet company. He says he doesn't use ecstasy himself, but that it's the rage in the internet industry, despite all the warnings. Some of the most powerful, successful, influential people I know are ecstasy users or have been ecstasy users in the past. Really? Oh, absolutely. And then there's Bob Wallace, one of the original employees at Microsoft, who also supports what Dansafe is doing. Mr. Wallace, you're giving thousands of dollars to this organization so that it can confirm that what these kids are taking is ecstasy and confirm that what they're taking sometimes is not ecstasy and in fact could be very dangerous. And it's that message that's making Dance Safe a hit with the rave crowd. It sounds to me like they, they care about kids. People are dying from things that are in ecstasy besides ecstasy. And people are dying because of misinformation and not knowing how to be safe. I think safe maybe is the wrong word in their name. Maybe it should be dance uh, deadly or dance dangerous. And what about the parents of those two young victims whose lives ended so tragically, so suddenly? Well, they don't think anyone should be checking illegal drugs and then handing them back to the user. Now, if there's an organization that wants to go there and they want to test your pills to make sure they're okay, to me, that's self-defeating. That's like saying, okay, do them. My first sense is to think that they need to confiscate the drugs, not promote it. Looking at the drug and handing it back, it, it gives them the feeling that it's okay. That's not the message that should be out there. It's not okay. How long Dance Safe can exist outside the law remains to be seen, but apparently the group does not intend to be stopped by its critics. Currently, there are plans to open 20 more chapters around the country, and Dance Safe is even holding its first national conference this month.